So after having a good understanding of what is supervised machine learning, it's now time to take a look into unsupervised machine learning, right? And remember, with unsupervised machine learning, there are mainly two types of machine learning we talk about. We talk about clustering and we talk about association. So let's take a look. Okay, first of all, you need to remember the golden rule here. The golden rule is that with supervised machine learning, you always work on labeled data, right? As I told you, you are, let's say, inserting a lot of pictures of cats and dogs, right? But when you are inserting those pictures, you are labeling your output that this is a cat, this is a dog. But with, and this is why it is called supervised machine learning because your labeled data acts as your supervisor, right? We learned that in the previous lecture. Okay, good. Now in unsupervised machine learning, obviously we don't have labeled data. So we talk about the unlabeled data. Now, how does unlabeled data look like? Just simple data, right? You're not giving any output. So if you see, I'm just inserting a lot of pictures, but I'm not telling which is a cat or which is a dog. So this is an unlabeled data and unlabeled data stands for unsupervised machine learning. Perfect. Let's take a look at its definition. So the definition says unsupervised learning involves analyzing and clustering unlabeled data sets. Now you might ask, but what is clustering? Clustering is nothing but another way of clustering is you can say grouping, right? You're just grouping the data. And now when you group the data, let's say this is cluster one and this is cluster two. So cluster one is having similar types of data and cluster two is having other similar type of data, right? So you can think of, what, of it as it is you're analyzing and clustering the unlabeled data set and you are discovering hidden patterns, right? Because the aim of machine learning, as we learn in supervised machine learning is you are understanding the patterns and based on those patterns, you are making predictions. Patterns, predictions, the two Ps are really important, right? Now, um, it deals with the data that has not been labeled, classified, categorized, and the algorithm tries to act on the data without any guidance, right? That's why it is unsupervised because there is no labeled data which is supervising uh, the machine learning uh, program, right? So that's why this is unsupervised machine learning. Now you talk about clustering. So I, I gave you some simple example on clustering. Uh, so clustering is the most common unsupervised machine learning technique. It is used to group the data points into clusters, right? So you are grouping the data points into clusters. So this is cluster one. It is of one data uh, type of data points and cluster two is other type of data points. So that items in the same cluster are more similar to each other. That's what I showed you. All the cr crosses are here. All the dots are here, right? So more similar to each other and those then in the other cluster. So all you are doing in clustering is you are grouping the data points into clusters. Now, again, a good example of uh, clustering, if you see here, um, identifying similarities in group groups, as you can see, we are just clustering them. Here, if you see, I've um, fed a lot of different pictures to the machine learning algorithm. Now the machine learning, uh, learning algorithm or uh, is actually working on it, right? And giving you the cluster. So this is one cluster, so you can call it cluster one, and this is cluster two, right? So here you can see it has grouped all the similar types of data in one cluster and other type of data in cluster two. So all the cats are, are uh, here, all the kind of dogs are here, right? So this is unsupervised machine learning. And unsupervised machine learning is really useful in market segmentation in the businesses where the customers are grouped based on the purchasing behavior. So you can easily see, or the companies can see the purchasing behavior and they can group uh, those customers and maybe do some kind of adverts accordingly for them. Next one, very important, association. And I'm pretty sure you would have seen association uh, when you, you are on Udemy, right? So what does Udemy do? So this technique identifies set of items in your data set that frequently occur together. Now here is a perfect example of association. Now let's say you are going to purchase an Oracle Cloud, uh, say foundation course, right? As soon as you go to purchase that course, you'll see that Udemy is actually telling you that, hey, 
these are the three courses that are frequently bought together because they are studying the patterns of other people, right? So this is machine learning. They are st studying the patterns of other people who have similar interests of you and they have actually gone and purchased these three of my three courses together, right? So it is like a combo we are getting, right? You're getting all the three courses with a reduced price and that's what machine learning is now telling you or giving you as a recommendation as well. You can say that why don't you purchase these uh, three courses together? This is association. So perfect example is in retail, finding the products that are often bought together to optimize the store layout or cross promoting the product. As I gave you my example, when you purchase my course, you will see that it will automatically associate all my courses and say or my courses on specific topics like it's not giving you cyber security because I have a course on cyber security. It won't show you here. It will just show you the Oracle Cloud or OCI related or Oracle Cloud ones uh, here together. Right. So not the cyber security one. So this is association. Then we do have a concept of anomaly detection. So uh, uh, this is uh, actually used for identifying unusual patterns. Right now, uh, as I said uh, that the 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 aim of machine learning is to identify patterns and make predictions so here you are identifying your unusual patterns so here example we give like a hacker who's intruding into your network right so the, the here anomaly detection can be really useful right uh, and you can easily detect fraud um, frauds as well so let's say you look at various transactions and you see these uh, set of transactions fall in a specific category and these are different ones right so you can easily make out that there is a, a different uh, behavior so this is a different pattern and this is a different pattern right so you can uh, detect fraud transactions in banking uh, by identifying the patterns that deviate significantly from majority of the data right now you might ask okay but which in which applications you can use so you can use in bioinformatics image speech uh, speech recognition image recognition as, as we just saw some examples and perfect example is recommender system right something what i showed you on udemy a similar way on spotify on netflix we've talked about netflix a lot the recommender system would utilize that because it would actually group uh, users with similar interests right as i said if you are watching a lot of say thriller movies then you would be shown thriller movies same way if you are uh, purchasing a lot of or, or going through a lot of oci courses oracle cloud courses you'd be shown oracle cloud courses you won't be shown the cybersecurity courses right so this is uh, these are the various applications and yes um, uh, it does come up with own challenges and, and the biggest challenge is because if I quickly compare with supervised learning, supervised learning is much easier. Why? Because you know the output, right? You know uh, this is a labeled data. Here the problem is your data is not labeled, right? So it is more difficult than supervised learning due to the lack of labeled data. And the other big example, uh, other uh, big challenge is to determine the right number of clusters in a data set without predefined categories. Now, it, just think about it, it can be so complex that uh, here it was a simple example of cat and a dog and you were e easily able to create two clusters and job done. But what if there are a lot of uh, variety of data in it, right? So there it becomes a problem. How many clusters do you want to come up with without without even knowing the categories they fall under? So like the, these are the kind of challenges uh, the data scientists have to work on. So with this, we come to an end of unsupervised machine learning, which has two types, clustering, association. Thanks for watching.